Hello and welcome. It's an impromptu video. Complete spur of the moment. My phone is wedged in the car's central display. This is not my car, by the way. This is a Renault Scenic. I have no idea what I'm filming because I can't see the screen, so hopefully this does look like complete and utter crap. This belongs to my in-laws, 2003 Renault Scenic. So you can sort of consider it a second generation model because the original was the Megan Scenic. It had these smaller lights on the front, but the back looks more or less the same. I think the fog lights are a bit different, but I digress. Very big success for Renault at the time because um, it completely solidified their place in the MPV market. And of course, MPVs are all but extinct these days. Uh, Citroen are also very successful in the MPV market, and I think they've abandoned them completely. Now it's just SUVs, but I digress. I want to talk about this car. Very odd. It's a very odd thing. I'm not used to the driving position. It's got a driving position that feels like a lorry, you know, like you go like that, not like this, but as if you're cleaning plates. That's what it feels like. Very spacious and airy loads of glass uh, well below the belt line by the way you know the glass is down here which is nice actually I do like the feeling of my car with a higher waistline because it makes you feel more protected but this is sort of more um, I don't know more relaxed I suppose this is called a comfortable car club so obviously comfort is, is very important and this is very comfortable indeed I have absolutely no problem. I would I would have no problem in doing lots of miles in this, which I have. I remember many years ago, I took my mum to a retreat way outside of town, and it was about 30 miles each way. So it wasn't exactly a cross-country trip, uh, but it was far enough to test the car's abilities. Now, in terms of comfort, it's superb. It's also rather refined because it's got a petrol engine. This is the 1.4 litre petrol, but it is very, refined, very comfortable, very nice to be in, in general. Uh, very practical as well. I mean, you've got all the cubby space, you've got one down here in the middle, two glove boxes, you've got a drawer beneath the passenger seat. You've got picnic tables in the back for your little terrace. Ooh. This needs your windscreen wipers. In the back, you've got three individual seats which can be removed and basically turn this into a van which is very handy and both me and my significant other have made good use of it over the years. Now I don't need to because I've got my own uh, estate car, but back when I had a saloon, this was very, very handy indeed to have on hand. Now the big problem with this car is when it gets to the motorway, where I am now, fifth gear, it's a 1.4 litre by the way, with this amount of horsepower, and we're not even doing 90 kph, which is 56 miles an hour and already I'm at two and a half I'm above two and a half thousand revs and this is the problem on the motorway this is a pile of, of, of trash it's rubbish it's just not made for this Jesus Christ I'm not even doing 90 and it feels like I'm completely caning it let me now let's sort of try and overtake with a lorry 85 90. Oh god, now the lorry wants to come into my lane. Come on, come on. 95. Yeah, I could knock one down, but I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I want to see how it, how it performs in fifth. We reached 90, now I'm beginning to decelerate because I'm going up a hill. So yeah, very poor performance from the 1.4. And you can imagine if there were more people in here. Ouch. I've never liked this engine. I've never liked small Renaults because of that. But... That's maybe that's me just being a bit unfair because I haven't really had that much access to big Renault, so they're probably brilliant. I don't know what am I talking about, but yeah, this is a car made for the city. This is not a car made for long journeys, in my humble opinion. Though the previous owner, which was my sister in law, she seemed to be absolutely fine doing so. So maybe it's just me that's been pampered with my lovely. Uh, motorway cruisers with their tall gearing that's probably true but there are some other defects first off if I can be honest and hand on heart I do appreciate Renault very much very courageous brand 
You know, they made things like the wind, which was mercilessly mocked. They made the Laguna Coupe when no one else was sort of facing up against the Germans, so to speak. Uh, I like Renault, but Renault build quality, especially the plastics. I mean, you can probably see the steering wheel. It's, it's, it seems like it's it's coming apart in my hands. And the entire plastics, all Renault plastics, have this weird feel to them. They don't age well. There's a lot of trim rattle. You might not be able to hear it, but there is. Uh, it's got some also some very interesting, shall we say, decisions in terms of the ergonomics. Sorry, ergonomics. So I've got my driver and passenger window controls here. My left hand at my fingertips, no problem there. But then the rear windows are down below, the, and I can't see them. They're below the steering wheel, and that is not the best place to put them at all. The climate control is way down there. Probably can't see it from where you are, but it's um, yeah, it's not easy to read. I don't even know if the screen works. Not the best. The driving position so upright, my god, I feel like I am being interrogated or something. No, I didn't do it, I swear. I don't know, I'm probably being a bit silly because I don't think you interrogate people with them sitting up bolt upright. I don't know, it never happened to me, so. All of the cloth on the doors and the seats, that's all coming apart. You know, like headliner comes off after a couple of years. That's what the seats are, where there's velour, so to speak. But in honestly, it's actually aged rather well for a Renault. I'm going to test it in traffic now. It's hot here. Does it have aircon? It does indeed. Let's test the aircon. Beep. No. That didn't work. I don't, know if, I don't even remember what I was talking about, but yeah. It's sort of, it stood the test of time as well as you could expect from a Renault from this era. Now, I do know lots of people who have Renault Clios from the early 2000s. That was it, the second generation Clio? That was not a cool car, in my humble opinion. It's like this, it's also got a bit of a loose gear shift, but I think they're probably more or less based on the same mechanicals. I don't know what else to say. So can this go up and down? <laughs> no, just, this is a reclining. God, I don't even know how it works. This is an excellent family car. Absolutely brilliant. So if you've got small children, it's incredibly practical and versatile up to a certain point. This car definitely has a comfort zone. And if you take it beyond that, for example, on the motorway, or maybe even some fast driving, which of course I did not test. This is not my car, I'm not gonna hoon around in it. But yeah, it's, it's versatile within its limits. That makes sense. But of course, this does things that other cars can't. Turning itself into a van. That's incredibly good. Four individual, sorry, three, not four. Three individual seats in the back with all the, you know, the cubby spaces you could shake a stick at. That's really good for family. But then again, of course, I would hesitate to take this car, for example, to the Algarve. I'm not sure I'd enjoy that. And I don't think the economy would be good either. I think this 1.4, because it has to be revved to within an inch of its life to get a shift on, I can't imagine how loud the engine's gonna be at 120 kph. Uh, this is not a car for the motorway. And yeah, I couldn't get the air condition to function. Maybe it's, maybe, it's, um, maybe it's broken, I don't know. So yeah, that's my conclusion. Very practical, not good for the motorway. Good for town, good for families. So Renault Scenic. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. If yeah, it was an interesting little uh, impromptu video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I bid you farewell.